I was reading the other day what was supposed to be a scientific definition of mindfulness. And on the one hand, they said that you should regard your mental states without reacting, without judging them. Just watch whatever's going to come, whatever's going to go. Pass no judgment at all. But then they said that you should act with others thoughtfully. Now there's a real disconnect there, because where do your actions come from? They come from your mind. They come from the state of your mind. And it really does make a difference whether you're acting on greed or acting on non-greed, acting on aversion or non-aversion, delusion, non-delusion. So you really do have to be careful about what states come up in your mind, which states you foster, which states you feed. This is why we meditate. We feed states of mindfulness, alertness, concentration, discernment. We feed our goodwill, our compassion, our empathetic joy, our equanimity when it's called for. In other words, we learn how to nourish what's good in the mind and make sure it doesn't go away. The Buddha actually said that's one of the duties of mindfulness. He calls it mindfulness as a governing principle. And he himself said he got on the right path when he was able to divide his thoughts into two types, those that should be acted on and those that shouldn't. And he judged them by the mind state that gave rise to them. And if you shouldn't act on them, he said, you, you know, try to beat them back the same way you would beat back cattle that tries to get into a rice field when the rice is growing and the grains are coming. So you do have to play an active role in looking after your mind and learning how to pass intelligent judgment what's coming up, what should be nurtured, what should be put aside. So we get the mind still here in the present moment. You do have to start out by saying, just whatever comes up, I'm not going to be shaken by it. Because it's only when you're unshaken that you can pass judgment clearly and accurately. So try to get the mind still. Give yourself a good place to inhabit inside here in the body, here in your awareness in the present moment. So when other thoughts come in, you can you can judge them from a place of comfort, place of well-being. That way you don't feel so threatened by the negative states you see. You don't get all excited about the, the positive states. You realize you have duties to do here. And they're good duties, looking after your own mind, making sure that this corner of the world for which you're responsible is not generating anything bad. And instead it's generating good things through your thoughts, your words, your deeds. That's the real duty of mindfulness, follows in the duties of the Four Noble Truths. If something gives rise to suffering, it's, you should try to abandon it. Activities that lead to the end of suffering are things you should develop. It's a value judgment right there. And you want to learn how to apply that value judgment to what's going on in your mind right here, right now. With the realization that the Buddhist directions there are for your own benefit, they're all for your own good. None of his negative judgments are final judgments. Think of yourself as a work in progress, like a carpenter working on a chair. The carpenter planes here, planes there, and whoops, there's a nick. Okay, you have to learn how to reshape the wood so that nobody can see the nick. You don't just say, well, it's a neck, and we'll just leave it there. You want the chair to look good? The other day when I was talking to the people at Apple, there was one guy who was saying that he, he had trouble. He, he tended to burst into tirades at the people working under him. He says, I guess my problem is I'm a perfectionist, and I don't expect everybody to do really good work. Maybe I should lower my standards. I said, no, don't lower your standards. Just realize that tirades are not effective. You want to make people want to rise to your standards. And that way good work comes out. The Buddha was not opposed to having high standards. He himself had very high standards. But they're high standards for your sake. You realize that. He's not trying to punish you. He's just pointing out, if you really want to be happy, this is what you've got to do. And it is something you can do. That's why his judgments are not harsh. They're helpful. That's why he taught. He wanted to help people. And here we are, ready to, ready to receive his help. <laughs>